Welcome back to Combat Mission Shock Force 2 for the first mission of the Valleys of Death campaign. This is a community made campaign made by PUG using the game's inbuilt mission editor. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. And what's interesting about this is that it's an Afghanistan style campaign. So counterinsurgency warfare with an American light infantry company against unconventional forces with an emphasis on keeping the casualties down and a minimum of that collateral damage thing. More than that, the campaign is something of a sandbox. There are 12 missions and almost all of them take place on the same large map, so unlike other combat mission campaigns, the player not only has a lot of room to manoeuvre and choose their own approach to the various objectives, but you get to know the map over time. We haven't had time to get the grips with the big sandbox yet though. The lead element of our force, 1st Platoon Bravo Company, has taken over Combat Outpost Able, relieving part of Alpha Company, and come under attack on their first night. It's 0500, and we're starting off with two contacts, an enemy fire team apparently 100 metres north of the main gate, and an unidentified group of people entering the ruined farm building about 170 metres to the northwest. The outpost itself consists of four single-storey buildings surrounded by trenches and barbed wire. Shock Force doesn't model any HESCO or anything like that, and while the trenches offer some questionable cover, the wire is nice to have. To the immediate south is a cliff face, which may or may not be traversable by nimble insurgents, I don't know yet. To the north, out the main gate, there's about 200 metres of open ground, and then a steep valley side leading down to what probably passes as a main road. About 400 metres off to the west, there is a huge chunk of lightly wooded hill that completely dominates Combat Outpost Abel and the small settlement of Dur Atel. Off to the east, the ground slopes up for about 200 metres to some woodland. Somewhat ominously, the woods look like they have some trenches dug in them, which also overlook the outpost, though not as much as the Great Big Hill. With a bit of terrain analysis like this, we can guesstimate an enemy attack plan. Fire support elements on the western hill and in the eastern woods suppress the outpost while assault elements attack from the north. If it was me, I'd probably try and get forward using some of the dead ground between the ruined farm and the northwest corner. How to defend Copable then? Well, I have a pretty significant force at my disposal. A single US Army infantry platoon consists of a platoon HQ and three nine-man rifle squads armed with a mix of M4 carbines, M249 squad automatic weapons and M203 grenade launchers, plus a pair of M240 machine guns. In addition to this, 1st platoon has a sniper team with a 50 caliber M107, a scout team and a fire support team attached, plus enough Humvees to carry everyone. This makes for 10 vehicles with a 50-50 split of mounted M240 and 50 caliber M2 machine guns. Four of the Humvees are being used as guard posts slash weapon platforms at the four corners of the outpost, with these and the trenches being currently manned by 1st squad, 2nd squad, the scout team and one of the MMGs. The rest of the infantry was, until recently, asleep in the buildings with the unmanned Humvees parked in the outpost courtyard. A couple of other points to note are that we're coming up on dawn and as such it doesn't look like the Pixel Truppen are using their night vision equipment, which is not great. And that they are wearing multicam uniforms with first cav patches courtesy of I believe Captain Miller from the Battlefront Forum, link for the mod in the description. The plan is basically to shoot the crap out of anything that moves outside the wire. I can move the perimeter defences around, though they seem okay enough where they are right now, and the teams in the buildings have orders to either man Humvees or get on the rooftops. I really want to move those parked Humvees, not only because they look like an amazing mortar target, but because all that firepower is going to be really important, and the armoured Humvees are probably one of the safer places for my limited number of pixel truppen to be. However, my ace in the hole here is off map two two-gun batteries of 155mm howitzers supplemented by three target reference points. The TRPs are going on the western hill, the ruined farm and on some of the trenches in the eastern woods so that I can get heavy artillery falling on these places as fast as possible. I'm kicking off the game with a long light anti-personnel barrage on the western hill because that is the terrain that worries me the most and I want to deny it to the enemy and a quick heavy personnel mission on the ruined farmhouse to try and nip that contact in the bud. There is a bit of a question mark on the reported contact by the ruined farm. 
The briefing notes unidentified persons rather than enemy, so that is not a positively identified contact and could be anyone. It might take me literally seconds of this campaign to get on the collateral damage scoreboard. On the other hand, that position really does seem like a likely jumping off point for enemy assault teams and in all seriousness, if the locals want to go poking around some ruins, they're going to live a lot longer if they don't do it at 5 in the morning during an insurgent attack. The contact to the north immediately resolves into a two-man RPG team, which lasts less time than it takes for me to say this sentence. Following them up though, is a vehicle-borne IED which rushes the main gate. This tanks some 556 before the driver is killed, then the trigger man hits his switch and the car evaporates in a gigantic explosion. The gate guards pick themselves up after the detonation. Luckily they managed to stop it about 90 meters out before it could get too close. At the same time, mortars start falling immediately east of Cop Abel. These are almost certainly 82mm and although a few rounds land close to the perimeter, they're off target. Which is good news, because a load of mortars dropping inside the wire is pretty much my worst case scenario here. My own off-map support is also dropping, them, hopefully killing or discouraging any insurgents lurking around the ruined farm on the western hill. Another enemy team does appear, heading in from the direction of the farm, but again they're killed in short order. So far the incoming attack seems a little weak. Nothing I've seen so far, with the exception of the BBID, looks like it had any chance of achieving anything, and even the car bomb would have had to get extremely lucky to get close enough to do any damage. So it's starting to feel like this activity out in front, combined with the mortars, is a feint. A properly coordinated attack in which a second car bomb or an infantry wave come rushing through the smoke and the dust of the first VBIED detonation to take advantage of suppression from the mortars would have been much more effective, but that doesn't seem to be happening. Instead, a couple of contacts pop up to the southwest. This wasn't actually an angle I had considered, but it's not bad. Coming up the shoulder here there is plenty of dead ground and the insurgents could potentially get pretty close. Unfortunately for them, I've still got a fire team and a Humvee on the southwest corner who spot and engage them when they're still 160 meters out. Unlike the other contacts so far, this one requires some reaction. I don't think a single M240 Humvee, three M4s and an M203 is enough to deal with these insurgents on their own, especially after the enemy goes to ground and disappears. So I'm shifting one of my reserve Humvees from the courtyard over, bringing another M240 online and moving the sniper team. Originally I was going to send them to the closest rooftop, but this not only didn't give a good enough angle, but would only be intensifying my firepower on the corner. The more angles I can get on the enemy the better, so the sniper team heads into the southern trenches to try and get some flanking fire. As soon as they move out though, a third contact pops up, a group of insurgents leaving the east wood. These are quickly engaged by the perimeter defences, take casualties and become him. The contact is pretty much neutralised, but there might be more enemy in the woods and they are conveniently close to a TRP, so the fist is up again. The light long barrage on the western hill is still going, but the other battery is easily enough for the job and I start setting up the short heavy anti-personnel mission. Thanks to the TRP, it's only going to take two minutes to call in. So far, the game's only been going for five minutes and the only existing pressure is on the southwest corner. Enemy teams approaching from the north have been wiped out, the enemy force that appeared in the east is standing by to be wiped out, and in the west, the dominant terrain is being denied by heavy artillery. Even the enemy mortars have stopped falling, having achieved very little, and judging by the amount of ammo they've expended, they probably stopped because they're out, and another enemy fire mission seems unlikely. As the 155s hit the eastern woods though, a contact appears in the northwest, on the far side of the ruined farm. Judging by the speed, it's a vehicle, and the gate guards have their attention split, some of them are looking off to the east of the woods contact instead of watching their front. The contact resolves into a second VBIED, but it's been confirmed by the Northwest Humvee which rapidly fills it full of 50 caliber fire and stops it before it can get close. At the same time, the Southwest contact pops up again, at much closer range. Despite consistent area fire on that slope, the insurgents have crawled their way forwards. Coming out of their patch of dead ground, the first two enemy pixel troppers are taken out with small arms fire and a shot from the sniper team. 
The third to appear gets an RPG off, but luckily this goes low and hits the slope just outside the wire before an M240 and more small arms fire destroy the RPG gunner and a fourth insurgent. That was a little close for comfort, but the next turn the insurgents keep going, returning fire that is thankfully either high or blocked by Humvee gun shields before overshooting with a final RPG. The survivors are quickly finished off by M240s and the sniper team, prompting the AI to throw the towel in. This mission only lasted 7 minutes. The insurgents have lost 20 men dead and 10 wounded, while the Americans haven't lost a man. Of the 7 enemy survivors, 3 are cowering on the southwest slope and there is a 4 man team hanging around in the ruined farmhouse. Almost all of the enemy force was accounted for after being spotted, except for a lone forward observer up on the western hill. Chances are he was killed on turn 1 before he could adjust those mortars onto Cop Abel. So even though it feels somewhat over the top to expend so much ammunition on a single enemy combatant, he was probably the insurgent's best chance of causing casualties here. That said, the enemy on the southwest corner got far too close for comfort. I don't think they could have actually gone into the outpost, but with such a small force for the campaign, any casualties they could cause would probably be problematic in the future. But what we did here was identify the most threatening insurgent approaches, the farm, the western hill and the eastern woods, and cover them off with the TRPs for fast, effective artillery support, all the while maintaining all-round defence with a central reserve in the courtyard. So even though what looks like the main enemy attack came in from an unanticipated direction, I was able to rapidly redeploy beefing up the southwest corner position with another Humvee and get the sniper team in on the act. So even though this was a pretty straightforward scenario, we're able to work a lot of different factors. Terrain analysis, planning, economy of force and flexibility mixed in with an active offensive mindset despite being on the defence. It's not about waiting for the enemy to come to you and then reacting, it's about thinking of ways to destroy him no matter the circumstances. If the battle had gone on any longer, the urge to leave the outpost and go hunting with the Humvees might have become too much to resist. Anyway, that's the first mission complete. First platoon has had its welcoming party and in the morning we can head out and hopefully return the favour. Hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.